Hi, my name is Glenn Hasselman. I'm just making this video for the users of Free Accounting Software to show you some further details of leave entitlements in Free Accounting Software. I've um, done the first video on leave entitlements and I've demonstrated how to accrue an annual leave entitlement in that video. Uh, in this video, I'll show you how to pay annual leave uh, when it's taken. So, um, go into the batches um, and we had just to show you the existing entitlement um, this was the last pay slip we've got the annual leave expense with tax code annual leave entitlement and the closing entitlement is 31 hours uh, which is $930 okay just a quick run through of the account and tax code setup you have a account called annual leave taken here um, it's an expense account uh, which is kind of irrelevant because it's all going to be 100% tax so it will be put against this provision of annual leave taken when I say tax in free accounting software tax is a broader concept than just actual taxes like GST or pay as you go it includes provisions for leave as well um, things to note on this annual leave taken account uh, that uh, apply super is true and apply leave is true so when they um, take leave they will accrue or get super on top of the leave um, that is when it's taken whilst they are working uh, or employed rather than payment of leave on termination um, apply leave is true and that is um, meaning that when they are on leave they are actually still accruing more leave okay so uh, normal time will have apply leave equals to true on it as well um, the default tax code is annual leave taken and I'll show you the setup of that um, tax code in a moment and the payment deduction type is earnings bracket including leave taken there is a leave expense category here don't use that that will mean you can't select the account on the payslip because the payslip will only show you the in different sections will only show you the accounts that relate to that section of the payslip so the one you want is earnings okay um, the setup of the tax code annual leave taken is there it's 100% tax um, and leave category is annual leave it does go on the um, BAS under salaries and wages and there are um, you know it goes into individual non-business gross on the um, single touch payroll lodgements okay so to pay someone annual leave if we um, Let's do that now. We'll do a new batch. Um, last pay slip was back in April. So just continue on from that. Ending. Save. Okay, go to the transactions, uh, new pay slip, select the employee. Okay, now let's say they were on annual leave for the full week and get um, 38 hours of annual leave. Okay, they would end up with a negative quantity because they started the um, uh, week with a uh, entitlement of 31 hours um, so that's probably not going to happen unless you decided to let them go into debit balance um, I won't save that for a moment just go and look at the previous pay slip and uh, there's the quantity from the previous 
uh, pay slip. So that's the opening entitlement for the next one. So I guess let's say they worked, oh hang on I didn't select the employee yet. Let's say they worked 30 hours and they took 8 hours leave. So um, add a line. So for that first 30 hours they've accrued 2.3 hours um, annual leave and then annual leave taken um, 8 hours. So the closing quantity is 25.9 so almost 26 uh, hours and what's happening is we've got the 31 uh, opening quantity then they're accruing 3 uh, that takes it to or accruing almost 3 takes it to almost 34 and then they are taking 8 which brings it down to around 26 so these numbers are obviously more precise than that but that's approximately what's happening here the software calculates this closing quantity and then it multiplies it by the normal rate of pay to get the closing amount and then the, this amount is calculated as the difference between the opening amount and the um, um, and the and the, the closing amount and in fact on that it, it actually doesn't get the uh, closing amount from the prior payslip it actually looks at the sum of all the previous transactions in the software so it's quite a robust um, calculation and um, in using uh, accounting software it, it, it can be difficult to um, to get the the um, balances to, to work out correct and I found this way of doing it is quite a robust way of doing it anyway so I will save that and um, I guess quickly show you the payslip so we've got the um, annual leave taken over here and then uh, the annual leave entitlement again. Now another thing I want to show you is what happens with annual leave on termination because that's slightly different. So we'll need a um, different tax code for that. In tax code uh, Fact, the tax percentage rate is also 100%, so it's like leave annual leave taken in that way. On the BAS, it will go into salaries and wages, it goes on the individual non business uh, payment summary or single touch payroll lodgement. And might actually just be in the. Um, I'm not sure where where this goes. Actually, um, could be lump sum A or um, individual non-business gross. I think, depending on. Um, Tax table for unused leave payments. Sounds promising. So 
So post August this where it's a um, resignation or terminated due to inefficiency or retirement. Um, so they say normal termination. Then you just include it in gross. Okay. And you tax it at their normal marginal rates. Termination because of redundancy, um, etc. 32% and lump sum A. So you're actually going to need a different um, um, setup depending on whether you want it into, to be in lump sum A or the normal section. Now I have done another video where I showed how to do lump sum A. So what I will do is put this one through as if it is a normal termination. So that means it goes to individual non-business gross. And the tax classification is not applicable. So pay as you go withholding is on a separate line. Okay, save that. Now we need an account. New account. And you'll leave on termination. Probably we could, you know, do some like normal termination to differentiate it from um, from the lump sum A setup that we have to do if we had both of them. Uh, employee might not understand that, so you might put something like resignation or something like that. Put it as an expense, active is true. Now apply super is false because you don't um, get super on the leave when it's paid out. And same with the apply leave. So you're not accruing leave when it's um, when it's a payout. Okay, and we link to that tax code that we've previously set up. Payment deduction type is earnings, including leave taken. I guess uh, it's not really taken in uh, service, it's, take, it's on termination. Um, normal rate multiplier is one. And then save. Okay, um, now we can go and record the payout of this leave. We go to the pay slips, do a new batch for the next week. So I think we were up to some time in April. Um, Save batch, transactions, new pay slip. Okay, so let's say the employee hadn't worked um, in this week. We just get annual leave on termination. And we can see that the employee has got 25.9 uh, hours entitlement. So you can just put in 29. Uh, Point five. Um, hang on, what went wrong there? Oh, it was twenty-five point nine. Sorry, twenty-five point nine. Um, uh, three eight. Uh, at this point, uh, where we've got this kind of small round in there, I'd normally just put that as a four and let it go into some minuscule negative kind of figure. Um, having five cents of the closing balance in the negative is no big deal. Um, and yeah, that's the, how to do a uh, leave payment. 
for annual leave, keeping in mind that you might need to do it in the way I described in the other video on lump sum A. Okay. All right. Um, I hope this video has been useful to you and thanks for watching.